Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. In today's video I want to talk about a few different things. But the first thing I'd like to touch on is, uh, what's that smell? It smells like stinky feet. My God, what in the world? You might be smelling stinky feet around your hives. I want to tell you why. Goldenrod is getting ready to bloom if it hasn't already in your area. Um, just yesterday I seen my first couple bees just starting to work the goldenrod. Um, so I imagine in the next week that uh, bee traffic is going to greatly pick up because the blooms are going to open up even more. Uh, we've had a lot of rain in the last week to 10 days so that's going to help the fall flow quite a bit so if you're smelling stinky feet around your hives that means that the bees are working the goldenrod and I actually read something this morning that I thought was kind of intriguing a couple people are saying that it's not necessarily the goldenrod that's making the stinky feet smell their beliefs is that it's aster making the stinky feet smell and their argument for this was they've seen their bees work goldenrod before the aster even went started to bloom and the goldenrod had no smell to it until the aster started to bloom and the bees started to work it. So could there be some truth to this? It's got me kind of curious. I haven't seen the aster push out the first bloom yet. So this is something I'm gonna pay close attention to this year and just see if maybe there's some truth to it. Um, I'd also like to, uh, up here in this right-hand corner, you'll see the exclamation point for information. Um, if you click on that, a box will drop down and in that box you're going to find um, different mite treatments um, because it is time that we start treating our mites so that we have healthy bees going into winter. You wait too long to start your treatments and you're still going to have sick bees. So don't delay folks, now is the time to act. I'm going to leave a few different methods linked over here on the side and uh, you can check those out if they're of interest to you. I'm also going to link over here on the side a little series I put together many years ago on uh, preparing hives for winter. Now a couple things in there I may have tweaked a little bit and not do quite the same anymore but everything I did in this in this series worked for me greatly. Um, if you have any questions on any of these videos um, you can leave it in the comments um, either down here in this video or on those videos and I will be sure to answer your uh, questions to the best of my knowledge. And to finish today's video up, I want to uh, share a few of the native wildflowers that are in my area right now. Um, I had a request for this either last week or the week before um, to share some knowledge on some of the plants that the bees are working. So we're going to do that. And then um, after you watch that, um, I'm also going to link up here in the corner some of the different plants that bees do work year round. I made a video on that years ago and I'll link it up here in the corner. So just a short little video today folks, but I think it'll be very helpful in preparing your bees for winter, getting rid of the mites, and maybe even teach you some education on the different plants that bees work. In this little section right here at the farm, uh, you can see this, there's some fence coming through here and then it turns and goes that way. This little corner though has always had some great pollinator plants in it. And I thought this would be an ideal place to kind of give you um, an idea on different plants that bees work. So the first one we have is obvious um, to a lot of beekeepers, and this is goldenrod. This is the last source of nectar for our bees. This and aster, but this produces a lot more nectar than the aster. Um, what we have here is jewelweed. Uh, some people call it forget-me-nots. Um, what's fun about jewelweed is it gets these seed pods on it, like you can see here, and when you touch them, they split open and all the seeds come out in your hands. They actually shoot the seeds. Um, if you hit them at the right time of the day, the seeds just go flying and scatter. So yes, honeybees do work this, and I have a video on, on this particular plant and bees working it. Um, when they go down inside of these flowers, um, there's a little white part here at the top. I think it's called the stigma. That rubs on the bee and leaves a white stripe right between their eyes. So that's jewelweed, and there's a yellow jewelweed and an orange. We only have the orange here. Um, what we have right here 
that this bumblebee is working is Joe Pie Weed, and it's starting to turn brown. It's more of a pinkish color. Um, you can see several of them here. That's Joe Pie Weed. Now, let me slide on down here and uh, give you a closer view of what the leaves look like. Just in case, look, we got a little bumble hanging out here on the leaf. But anyway, that's what the leaf structure looks like on, on that. Um, what we have here is actually smartweed. Uh, this is the white variety. There is a pink, almost red variety too. Um, this normally doesn't get that tall, but since this area doesn't get mowed, it's doing quite wonderful. So we've did Joe Pie, Jewel Weed, um, Goldenrod. Slide on down here now. And here we have wing stem, which is starting to die off too. Um, for any of you that collect seeds, this is an excellent seed to, uh, to gather and to maybe get around your own bee yard. This is wing stem. The bees do love it and they work it quite heavily. I'm looking down through here. I'm not seeing anything else that I haven't mentioned. Oh, right here. This is ragweed. So that's just a few plants. Um, as I come across more, I'll share them in videos. But for right now, that's what we've got to work with, folks. Okay, so as I'm walking back to the front of the farm, I found another plant. This one here is called chicory. And yes, the bees like it. It produces a, a light colored pollen. And um, it's not real tolerant of the sun. Right now, we're having colder weather. It's only supposed to get into the low 70s today. But on a 90 degree day, um, the blooms are only open first thing in the morning. And as the sun starts to beat on these plants, they close up for the day. Okay, now I get this plant confused with another one that looks real close to it. So this one's either bone set and, or, um, boy, I can't ever remember the name of the other plant. I want to say snakeweed, but that isn't it, so I'll leave the correct name across the bottom. Um, I don't have a problem with bone set here on the farm. I do have a problem with the other plant that looks almost identical to this except for the leaves. Let's go up here and see if that's what this one is. No, same leaf structure. Let's walk down through here and see if we can see any more of it. And then I'll explain a little further in depth. Okay, I see some more coming up. All of these have the same leaves. So, to be honest with you, I can't tell you which is which. I know they look a lot alike. And I'm gonna have to call the one snakeweed because I can't remember its exact name until I get on Google. The snakeweed is very toxic to livestock. What it does is it causes um, milk poisoning. So let's say one of my cows come along and uh, we're in a dry, uh, late summer, early fall um, setting, and there's not a whole lot growing for the cows to eat. The cows come along and see this big, tall green plant, and they're like, mmm, yum. Normally, they wouldn't eat it because they would have, have other options. But in this scenario, this is all they have, so they eat it. That cow's not going to die, but if that cow has a calf that's nursing her, that calf is doomed. Um, sadly, I've learned this the hard way, and it took me a couple calves to realize what the problem was. Um, like I said, I can't say that this is the one. Um, you have to get on Google and, and do a search of both of them. The one has real long, narrow leaves instead of the, the fatter leaves like you're seeing here. Um, it's actually... The snakeweed is actually how Abe Lincoln's mother died. Milk poisoning. Just a little fact there for you. 
the bone set and the milk or the snake weed. Bees work both of them. Does that mean the honey is toxic? Hasn't bothered me. So if you like the video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click on the little bell so you get notified when I'm releasing new videos. Um, if you like my videos and you want to throw me some support, come on over to my Patreon page, which is also linked up here and down below the video. Um, and that's where you can support the videos I bring to you guys each and every week. And uh, what that does is it helps keep me motivated to get out here and set time aside for a whole day of either of recording, editing, uploading. It's a whole big to-do, folks, let me tell you. Um, to do it on your free time, yeah, that's, that's all right. But when you've got to do it every week or when you choose to do it every week, it gets to be more of a, a job. So if you're interested in throwing me some support, it would be greatly appreciated. I know I surely do uh, appreciate the Patreons that I currently have, and I'd like to throw out a big thank you to them. Um, see you next week, folks. Thanks for watching JC's Bees.